Assess the validity of this statement. FDR's tactics for bringing America out of the Great Depression can be seen as a marked departure from the policies of Harding, Coolidge, and Hoover. Our claim is that FDR's policies marked a significant departure from the policies of Harding, Coolidge, and Hoover because of FDR's belief that investing government money into the economy by creating jobs would improve the economy, which was a sharp contrast to the trickle-down theories and other policies of his predecessors. The policies of the government in the 1920s were quite conservative. For example, in World War I, the government took over the railroads to, in order to ensure that there were enough supplies for the war. However, after the war, the government gave the railroads back to their respective owners. In the S. Cummins Transportation Act of 1920, the government encouraged people to privately own railroads. Also, the government, namely Attorney General Dougherty, did what they could to weaken labor unions. In 1922, the railroad companies gave, gave a wage cut of 12% to their workers. Naturally, the labor unions in the company responded by starting a strike. Dougherty, liking big business as most of the government at the time, issued an injunction that forced the workers to stop the strike. This had a devastating impact on labor unions, and in fact, membership in the unions dropped by 30%. Another conservative policy was the constant raises of the tariff. In 1922, the Ford-McCumber tariff allowed the president to raise and lower the tariff as he wishes. And surprise, the super-conservative Harding and Coolidge ended up raising the tariff a lot over their terms. Surprise, the super-conservative Harding and Coolidge ended up raising the tariff a lot over their terms. Harding was a strong conservative who felt that a return to simpler times without the policies of the progressive era was necessary. He wanted a laissez-faire, he wanted a return to laissez-faire economics and classic American isolationism. Coolidge was focused on simple policies that most people could understand, who, um, and supported the policies of his predecessor, Harding, changing, um, changing during his presidency. Hoover also supported laissez-faire economics and opposed federal direct relief efforts throughout most of his presidency. He thought putting money into businesses would help the economy far more than putting Americans on welfare. This concept was called trickle-down economics, and many conservative political leaders still use these policies today. Hoover's efforts were overall very ineffective, and he lost to FDR because of the public's disagreements with him. Many people during the Depression were resentful towards Hoover and considered him to be uncaring and cold and blamed him for most of their economic problems. Because of this, homeless encampments were nicknamed Hoovervilles, which was a sharp contrast to the warm character of FDR. As soon as Franklin Delano Roosevelt got inaug inaugurated in 1933, he got down to business. He quickly started a 100 days Congress to pass a bunch of acts that would hopefully save the economy from the Depression, focusing on relief, recovery, and reform. These acts are much more liberal than the acts passed by Congress during the years of Harding and Coolidge, and allowed the government to be much more hands-on on the economy. These acts established a Civil Works Administration in 1933, led by Hopkins, which supplied workers with temporary jobs, such as leaf raking and other, jo and other jobs that some viewed as jobs made for the sole purpose of employing people. Congress also started the Works Progress Administration in 1935, which was extremely popular among the people. It gave people public projects to work on, such as buildings and bridges. Departing from the anti-labor union view in the 1920s, Congress passed the Wagner Act in 1935 that allowed and supported labor unions to thrive and to bargain with companies with a representative. In conclusion, throughout his, president, yeah, throughout his presidency, FDR made strong moves to separate himself from the conservative economic policies of his predecessors, who mainly believed that no gains could be made from investing money into jobs and that giving citizens money would make them lazy. FDR decided that investing in government work programs would 